I'm Sanford Greenberg, Professor of Legal Research and Writing at Chicago Ken College of Law. Federal campaign finance laws include two types of restrictions on the amounts that individual donors can give during an election cycle. The base limits uh, restrict what a single donor can give to a single political candidate or, or political committee during an election cycle, and aggregate limits, as the name suggests, restrict the total amount that a, an individual donor can give to any number of candidates or committees during the cycle. Sean McCutcheon, a political contributor, joined by the Republican National Committee, challenged the aggregate limits as a violation of McCutcheon's f free speech, uh, freedom of expression, and freedom of association rights. A three-judge panel dismissed the complaint and McCutcheon and the Republican National Committee appealed directly to the Supreme Court of the United States. On April 2nd, 2014, the court reversed the judgment of the district court and held that the, restriction, the aggregate restrictions were violated of the First Amendment. In a plurality opinion written by Chief Justice Roberts and joined by Justices Scalia, Scalia Kennedy, and Alito, the court held that campaign contributions are protected by the First Amendment because they serve as a form of both political expression and political association. For example, if I contribute to a candidate, I'm expressing my support for him and my support for the policies that he favors. I'm also perhaps um, associating with that candidate or that campaign committee. The plurality opinion reasoned that the only constitutionally permissible goal for restricting individual contributions is the prevention of so-called quid pro quo corruption and the appearance of such corruption. Quid pro quo is a Latin term meaning basically, I give you something, you give me something in return. I give you a, a campaign contribution, you vote for a policy that I want, or you vote against a law that I oppose. On the other hand, the court noted, um, the goal, for example, of avoiding increased or disproportionate access on the part of a campaign contributor was not a sufficient justification for such restrictions. According to the government, however, the aggregate limits are needed to prevent circumvention of the base limits. For example, a contributor might give to any number of committees with the understanding or at least expectation that those various committees would funnel money to an individual candidate and that the total amount that eventually reached the candidate would surpass the base limits. But the plurality reason that uh, existing statutory um, provisions and existing regulatory provisions are sufficient to prevent such circumvention of the base limits. Therefore, the aggregate limits could not be upheld as serving the anti-quid pro quo purpose and the limits thus were unconstitutional. As the plurality remarked, once the aggregate limits kick in, quote, the limits deny the individual all ability to exercise his expressive and associational rights by contributing to someone who will advocate for his policy preferences. Justice Thomas concurred in the judgment. Um, he would have gone further than plurality and, and overruled an important 1976 case, Buckley versus Vallejo, which had originally established a distinct treatment of political contribution restrictions and political expenditure restrictions. The plurality reasoned, however, that it was not necessary to reach that issue today and therefore uh, declined to overrule Buckley. A dissent was written by Justice Breyer, joined by Justices Ginsburg, Sotomayor, and Kagan. The dissent reasoned that the plurality had um, focused too narrowly on quid pro quo corruption as the only permissible purpose and would have had a broader um, uh, notion of the permissible purposes underlying campaign restrictions. And the plurality uh, um, and the dissent also reasoned that, that the plurality had underestimated the link between the aggregate limits and the base limits, the circumvention problem, and had overestimated the value of the regulatory and statutory uh, um, provisions alluded to earlier. 